Rabbi Isai, here we go. Today we're going to talk about drinking on Purim. A topic, okay, there's already an applause. Baal Hashem. <laughs> drinking is certainly one of the most looked down upon, frowned upon, displeased with horrible practices that the Torah has very, very negative things to say about. Everything bad happens from drinking. I never saw, you can correct me if I'm wrong, any world peace, change the world, help humanity event happen and be birthed out of pubs and nightclubs. And the feature at the pubs and the nightclubs is drinking, kiyadua. The horrible stories in the Torah, the kilkul, the damage that comes from drinking is, is explicit and mentioned in great detail. The Torah calls drinking a midemagune, a, a lowly, horrible thing. Eliyahu Anavi, Elijah the prophet in the Gemara and Brachas, Chaf Dalad Amid Beis, says that be careful not to get drunk so that you shouldn't come to sin. Drinking brings not good things in its wake. And I don't need to elaborate, everybody knows, that it's something that uh, doesn't take people in the right direction. Alcoholics are, are th of the most destructive people in the entire world to themselves, to other people, the damage that it causes, the, the debris field that goes along with someone in the family being an alcoholic, it's horrible. And therefore, first and foremost, we are making it explicitly clear that the Torah looks very down upon drinking. So the obvious question is, why do we have this one day a year? And I want to just make sure that we have it clear what the Torah is condoning. Why do we have this one day a year? And I'm reading you from the Gemara. Mechaev inish libesume bepuraya ad delo yada ben orahom and leboruch mordechai. That the Torah, the Torah says that a person is chayiv lebesume. We'll see what that means in a second. The simple meaning of besume is you're chayiv to get spicy, spiced on Purim until you don't know the difference between or haman, cursed is haman, and blessed is Mordechai. That's what the Torah says. That's the mitzvah of the Torah the mitzvah that was given to us from Chazal, from the rabbis, in our Torah, in the sacred Talmud. So how do we have such a mitzvah? How do we have such a concept that in one place the Torah says it's the worst thing possible, and then you see that we have this amazing mitzvah to get besume, and Rashi says, l'shtaker b'yayin. Rashi says to drink wine. Lishtaker seemingly means to drink a good amount of yain. So let's go through this for the few minutes that we have. I'm going to start a bit, uh, maybe Kabbalistic, then we're going to try to make it very practical, and then we're going to zoom out again. It's called Klal Prat Klal. You see the big picture, you zoom in to the detail of the, of the project, and then you see the, with all the nuance of the detail, then you zoom out and you see the brilliance of the palace and all of its, but now we're appreciating the details. So there's a light that's going to come down on Purim. There's a big, big or. There's a light that's called the or of Yesoid Abba. Whether you know what that means or not, it doesn't matter. That's what's coming down to the world, Yesoid Abba. A very, 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 very high light that's going to come down to this world. And the power of Purim is that that light it's a light of relationship, it's a light of intimacy with God, is going to come down to the world. All the things that we are yearning for and we're working for, and that's really the reason why we're all in yeshiva, is we want to feel intimately close to God. That light is going to shine in all of its brilliance on Purim in a very, very, very intense way. Your soul will, will know what's going on. That light is going to shine, and it's going to come all the way down to the sphere of Malchus. Malchus means all the way down to this world, to the lowest denominator. 
and even shine below the world of Malchus. Below the world of Malchus is the world of the Klippas, is the world of the dark side. That light is going to shine all the way down, even to the place of Haman. Because, you know, there can't be a Haman, and there can't be anything dark in your life, unless God has put some spark of godliness there. That's why anytime you're going through a problem, if you could just remember that God is the one that's giving this to me, then all of a sudden the problem has a way of just going away. Because you unlocked the God spark inside that moment. So that's a light that's going to come down. And the light is going to shine really on two places, on the, the right side, which is called the power of the Moichen of Abba, and on the left side, which is the Moichen of Ima, which is called Chochma and Bina. And in order to bring that light down, you need to do two things. You need to eat. When you eat, you bring down the light of Chochma. Chochma is a very, very powerful, clear light. And in order to bring down the light of Bina, Bina is the world where things all of a sudden become spread through the world in multiplicity. In order to bring down that light, you need to drink. And because we want to bring down a lot of light in the world of Bina, we'll see maybe when Mashiach comes, it's going to be more of the light of Chachma. But for now, on Purim, we bring down a lot of light of Bina. So we drink more during the meal than you eat. Make sure to eat, otherwise it's a real big problem. But make sure you drink. And that's Mechaev Inish Lebesume Bepuraya, as we want to bring down this light that's coming down. Yeah, Gavriel? Uh, what happens if you don't like the feeling of getting drunk? If you don't like the feeling, yeah. then, and it's going to make you sick, then don't do it. Yeah, like you just don't enjoy the, the feeling that comes so, personally. So, it. there's no mitzvah to, to be sick. I wouldn't say the mitzvah sick. is to be Besume. I wouldn't say sick, but you would enjoy it. So we say you should drink Yosem Elimudoy. Yosem Elimudoy means if you normally have uh, one sip of wine, have two sips of wine. Have something more than you're normally accustomed to and then go to bed. And once you go to bed, you don't know the difference between Or Haman and Baruch Mordechai because you're sleeping. And be Yotzi like that. The Arizal and the Kubalim seem to go in the, op the opposite direction and they seem to encourage actual drinking. What should you drink? Ideally, yayin. Ideally, the Arizal points out wine, red wine. Red wine is more chosher than white wine. Why wine? We'll see in the grand finale why wine. But why, why, uh, why wine? But the simple meaning is that that's what all the mitzvah came through during the Purim story. All the mitzvah was through yayin. Achashverosh makes a feast with wine, and then everyone's getting drunk. And then they ask to bring Vashti in, and she doesn't want to come. And later, Esther has her party with wine. Everything, the whole story, everyone's drinking wine. There's a yayin. Yayin is also the gematria, 70, which is the gematria, soid. Wine brings out the secrets. And many, 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 many tzaddikim, the custom was to drink wine, specifically red wine. I suggest to people, you don't need much. Anybody who's walking around, and he's already like saying things and making WhatsApp groups like, so how many bottles did you get, bro? Just run away. You know, <laughs> block sender. You get, run away. The Chida Kodesh says, we have a custom to dress up. We're going to talk about this more on the Yom Ian on uh, Sunday with the guys. That we have a custom to dress up. So the Chida Kadosh says that on Purim, every single year, somebody in the town, somebody in the community will also dress up. But it won't be that guy. The Yetzirah is also going to dress up on Purim. So be careful for the Yetzirah dressed up as somebody maybe you know that's coming over to you and saying, let's go. This is not, uh, this is uh, oat milk and this is, uh, there's nothing uh, alcoholic in here. But he's pouring you, uh, he's the one with like a heavy hand he keeps trying to pour. So be careful of that guy also on Purim. Ideally, 
get the nicest bottle of wine that you can afford. One bottle, maybe two, that's all you need. The nicest bottle you can afford, one or two bottles, and that's all you need. You could share with your friends, you get an ex exceptionally nice bottle, so give him a glass, he'll give you a glass of what he has. Red wine, nothing else. That's where the soid is, that's where the ikr is. The best bottles you can afford. This is your clay zine. These are your, this is your, your weapons against Amalek, is the yain. That's the soid. And the whole power of Purim is that we want to be marbe b'simcha. And remember we explained a few days ago that simcha means when something flips around. When something I thought was going to be like this, but then we flip it around. So dafka, the beverage that brings the most simcha, so King David says, yain yisamach levav enosh, that wine makes the heart of man glad, makes him happy, brings simcha. So wine is already mentioned as the thing that brings simcha. Purim is about simcha, others about simcha, use the beverage like Rashi says, yayin, that brings simcha. But let's understand why we're allowed to do such a thing more deeply. Okay, this is important. This is the main part of the shir. Because there's going to be such a great light coming down on Purim, I mean a light of miracle, a light that's going to come all the way down to this world, we have a rule that any time that such a great light is going to be revealed, Hashem, so to speak, Hashem doesn't have emotions like we do. He shows emotion. He expresses emotion. It's not essential to God. God is infinite. But God says that any time that I bring a great light down to the world, I'm worried that if people grab onto that light, they could do crazy things with it. What would be a concern? So such a great light, <clears throat> the Svarim say, <clears throat> if somebody takes that light, they could use it and resurrect the dead. They could use it and do all sorts of unbelievable things, miraculous things. They could force Mashiach to come. When you have such a powerful light, they could, uh, they could break all the... And if the world's not ready for that, if the world's not ready for the resurrection of the dead, that could make a lot of complications, you understand? So Chazal knew that on this day there would be such a great light opening up, the light of Yisoyed Abba, and it's a light that's going to come all the way down to the lowest of worlds, all the way down, literally, to the world of Malchus and below, to the world of the Klippas, that they were worried that people would get a hold of this light. So the rabbi said, on this one day, it's a good idea that you should drink. Because if you drink, you won't have the wherewithal to realize what's really going on. And therefore, you won't uh, do something crazy like, uh, you know, resurrect the dead or something. And get ahead of yourself, you know. Move in Shleimer. You know, be careful. So the Baal Shem says a famous story about this, that there was a Jew, and this Jew sadly was going, and he, he was a very wealthy person, and he went to go take all of his money. He was traveling to a faraway town to go do a horrible, horrible sin. And he was on his way. He had a huge amount of money, because he wanted to do, like, you know, a mahadrim and a mahadrim de kavera, as, you know. So he took all of his money. He was going to hire the best of the best and just... And on his way, he heard the sounds of crying. And he heard that there was, there was wailing, and he heard, he heard sounds of Jews, and sounds of mothers and children. And he realized that there was a local warlord, and he was in his palace. And the warlord, who during those times had the powers of Chaim Vemisa, Biyodov, of life and death in his hands, and he, was, he had captured a number of Jews and was claiming that they needed to pay all sorts of taxes and additional things and was essentially going to extort them for everything they had. And if they couldn't produce a major sum of money, 
then they would all be killed. And this Yid who heard this, and he looked inside of his pouch and he saw the unbelievable wealth that he had, and he heard the sounds of the cries. So he marched up to the ruler and he said, I'm going to free all the captives now. Here's the money. Here's the ransom. And the Baal Shem Tov said at that moment he was aware of what happened in Nezbich. And he said in Shemayim that there was such a huge simcha, there was such a huge uproar in heaven that the heavenly courts all decreed that if this Jew down below were to pray for Mashiach, Mashiach would come on the spot. And because there was such a big light that had come because of this amazing mitzvah that he did, because he did not go to do the sin, he gave all the money to save the Jews. So he had this amazing power. But the heavenly tribunal also rebutted back and said, we're not ready, it's going to make, the whole world's going to turn upside down. So the heavenly tribunal decreed that this Jew should become a shikr. He should become a drunkard. Because if he became a drunkard, he'd never have a free minute to really daven. And Kachava, as soon as that happened, he went home and he just started drinking. And he would drink all the time, and when he would fall asleep, he would wake up, and he had a bottle beside his bed, and he would keep drinking. And there came a time that somebody came to the Baal Shem Tov and he said that we need a big Yeshua. There was a bad gezer that was made for the Jewish people, a horrible decree. And the Baal Shem Tov said, there's nothing to do. I, I can't help you. There's only one Yid that can help. And he said the name, he said, that drunkard, he just drinks all day, he can't do anything. He said, you don't understand, if you can catch him between drinks, between the time that he passes out and wakes up and grabs the bottle, he sleeps with the bottle, if you can catch him in the second before he drinks, he has like a pulley system, it's like, so he wakes up in his eye, if you can catch him at that moment and get a bracha from him, all the gezeras will be done. And Kachava, they went to this Yid and he was drunk and drunk and, and they couldn't sometimes like grab it out of his hand and he would drink as soon as he got up. But they were able to somehow maneuver that they were able to get a second before he was able to grab the bottle. They smashed it. What? What? And he said, please, down with this. And he said, brother, that's lava. And the whole thing was off. And he saved the day. So the Tzadikim said that there's this great, great light that's coming down on Purim. That in a certain way... It's so powerful that we have to drink a little bit. But you might think, what do you mean? Shouldn't we do the opposite? Let's just not drink and then tap into this light. So the tzaddikim said, both the drinking is to make sure we don't do anything crazy and turn the world literally into something that we're not going to be able to handle by having mamish like, what was that thriller? Some like Michael Jackson, dead bodies walking out of the round. That was, that was, am I correct on that? Yeah? You know, like, we got to be careful with this. But it must be obvious as well that if the drinking was given, it's not just that we don't do things that are too crazy and, like, ask for the resurrection. It must be that through the drinking we actually could get the resurrection if we do it properly. So that's what the tzaddikim said, that if you could tap in that yayin, that yayin is the side. That yayin is the side of your life. Yayin gematria sod. If you could tap into that through the yayin, mishenichnas yayin yoytza sod, that through the drinking that there's a secret that's coming out, that I could tap into that everything that I want, and the secret is, even all the things, the haman of my life, he also was put in my life for a reason to help me. He was also put in my life to help me. All my challenges were here to help me. They weren't here to knock me down. They're here to help me to become a better person. And in the words of the Rashiva, on Purim, if you could take a cup of wine and you could say L'chaim to the Yetzirah, you could actually say L'chaim, thank you for giving me this opportunity to overcome you. Thank you that there was a reason why everything that happened in my life happened. That's what it means, Ein Oid Malvadai, there's nothing but you Hashem, there's sparks. And that's what Yusoyed Abba is coming all the way down to the lowest place to give life 
even to that, to give life to the lowest, lowest things in this world, that I recognize that it all came from you, Hashem. And the Sfarim say you could really do this in a healthy way if you have in mind that there's two ways to spell Hashem's name. If you get this, you get this. If not, maybe next Purim. That you spell Yud K Vav K out. So it's a Yud is Yud Vav Dalid. And He is He Yud. And Vav is Vav Yud Vav. And He is He Yud. So that's Yud K Vav K spelled out. That's Shem Ab. That's 72, which Gematria Chesed. How many Yuds are in that name? Four. Because Yud, Yud Vav Dalid. And He is He Yud. Vav, Yud Vav Yud. Yud, yud, uh, vav, yud vav. And then He, He Yud. So there's four there. And then there's a second way to spell Hashem's name, Sag. So it's Yud Vav Dalid, then He Yud, and then this time it's Vav Aleph Vav, and then He Yud. There's three Yuds. So there's four Yuds plus three Yuds is how many Yuds? Seven Yuds. Seven Yuds, Gematria? Seventy. That's Yayin. So if you could have those two names of God in mind, and you could see those seven Yuds while you're drinking, and you remember that it's all Hashem, then you'll never come to any Michshel. You'll have no problems. You'll never give the light to the wrong places. The light will go all to the right places. So how should this look practically? Buy the best bottle of wine that you can. No drinking like light. No drinking like a frat party. No keg stands. No master bros. No chads. No nothing. No offense if there's any chads here. Okay? He's just the classic master bro guy. None of that. That's not what we do. We're not into that at all. We're into you take one full glass of the best wine that you can get. You sing a niggin for like 20 minutes with your first cup of wine. You're literally just sitting there. Did it die, 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 You're thinking, Mamish, meditating, meditating. I want to bring the light of Yisoyed Abedem. I want the resurrection of the dead. I want to see Mashiach Hashem. I want the light to go to the. Let us be ready. Let me be ready for you, Hashem. Let me, please, fix everything. It's the last Chag of the year. Fix everything. Fix everything. And all the problems that I went through, please, Hashem. Let me know that I went through those things to help me be a better Yid, to help me be a better person. And after 20 minutes of singing and crying, then you drink your cup of wine. And then you watch out for the guy that tries to pour you another one and you say, bro, just one second. Sing for another 20 minutes and then pour another glass of wine. One, by the way, one full glass of red wine is enough to eat a little bit of bread in the middle. Then after that, another glass of red wine. Just at that point, you're an hour in and you're in a good zone. Sing a niggin for another hour, ideally. Adeloyada. Like for another hour. Rabbi Dov Bear and I sang that niggin in his cave in his house on Purim for about five hours straight. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Is just have the requisite amount and then just sing Adeloyada for five hours straight. When do we do this? About ten years ago. We used to have every Purim. What time should you start this process? The process starts sometime in the early afternoon and it goes... Adalai Sashacha. Okay? And then the third cup, and the cups are Yudkei Vavke, the third cup, just, you know, you drink that. At that point, all the tshuva, all the ava, all the love from Hashem. And that's where you see the drinking is not a davar magune. It becomes the most beautiful thing. The person that says, Hashem, I want the secret of me being a neshama to come out. I want that secret to emerge on Purim. And he gets ready for it in a healthy way. That's the most beautiful thing. But there's only one day that we could do this. Hashem gave us Purim. That's the only day. And the grand finale of it is, you know, the Jewish people pride ourselves on being very rational and level-headed. And we understand that Hashem is an infinite God. And therefore, the rest of the year, we, we're trying to understand an infinite God through His Torah. But the rational person says, how could you ever understand an infinite God with finite logic systems? 
There has to be one day out of the year which is a non-rational day. And that's also rational to have a day like that. A day that you transcend rational thought. You go to the super-rational, the experiential. That's Ad Delo Yada. That's the world of Purim. So for 364 days of the year, we're extremely sober and logical. And for one day out of the year, we take our logic and we say, well, God, infinity is the logical existence, so how am I going to access that? Not with finite systems, I need a day where I go up, where I go into Ad Delo Yada. Don't try to do that all year, that's not what we're into. One day a year with the right people around you, and the right love and support, that we're all going to go to that space together. That's a place where all your problems, everything starts to make sense. Rabbi Yisai, we should be zoicha to the or of Purim. We should be zoicha to the Mashiach Tzidkein. We should be zoicha to the resurrection of the dead once and for all. And all of humanity to come home with the binyan base ashlishi bimheravi amenu amen. Amen. Afrelach and Purim, Rabbi Yisai. Wonderful Purim. Call to.